alive. It feels like a, every time I do this, it feels like it's like it's been a long time since I've done this. Um, I think it's to do with my health because it just wears me out and then I feel like I'm really exhausted and then um, don't have the energy to do this stuff. But I enjoyed this. Uh, I think um, for someone who cl cried for their first time when doing live <laughs> um, in person, you know, before a crowd speaking, coming this far over so many decades is such a good feel and um, it feels quite um, confidence building each time, I think. Um, and I'm always scared to jump on anyway or hesitant, but it's about confidence. And you, every time you do something like this, you feel a bit more confidence. Uh, and you, you know, the um, the hesitancy falls away once you get into it. So thank you again for watching. Um, I'm Malfunction. That's my art name, uh, and I chose it about two and a half years ago uh, due to my radio uh, announced announcer DJ type thing. So welcome. Thank you for watching. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, wherever you are, you're in good health. Um, beautiful Feng Rei, uh, once again, here in New Zealand. Um, if you know, if you don't know much about our city, you know, I implore you to find out uh, about our amazing city and our amazing area of Northland here in New Zealand and the top half, or top quarter, possibly. Uh, lots of beaches, lots of uh, sunny sun, uh, we're in the middle of winter right now, almost going out of it. But uh, our, you know, for tourism, our, you know, we're one of the really nice, nice areas in um, uh in Northland, in the world, I'd say. Have some of those nicest beaches as well, clean beaches, uh, great tourist spots, and so on. So thank you uh, for joining me tonight. Um, it is tonight here in New Zealand, so it's 7 p.m., just past it. So got, a, got a couple things to cover tonight. Uh, as I mentioned, there will be a Monopoly unboxing of the 80-year-old, uh, 80 years of Marvel. Uh, I have been a huge Marvel fan until recently. Um, and so, and that's that's usually the last five odd years where, the, where they overhaul their whole uh, iconic characters into new characters and replace them with new characters that just didn't make sense to me. And the writing's really trash, sadly. Um, so, but... But mind you, I still buy comics. I, um, despite not liking what they've done to the storytelling, I still buy comics. But I only buy them for covers. Now I mentioned the other week when I was interviewing Richard Cranenborough that I don't read comics anymore. Um, and this is the I'm talking about the mainstream comics. That's because the writing's trash. I'm not a great writer myself, so I don't blow hard about my own writing. But if you're at the at the professional level of actually having a title to write, like such as Batman or X-Men, you're expected to be the cream of the crop to tell good stories. So uh, this past week, I purchased some comics uh, and for covers alone. So here's the covers. This is uh, this is um, the latest uh, number one issue of, I don't know when this came out. I like variant covers, I do. Uh, and uh, this is, um, as you can see, Star Wars, the original. Uh, I think this is the Empire Strikes Back, if I remember right. What a beautiful cover, right? Just a photo cover. You know, it's amazing to collect because it's just, I mean, I don't care about the story. I really don't. Uh, but artwork's pretty good. You know, artwork's pretty good. It's a number one. Um, but, of course, it's it's a beautiful, beautiful, um, you know, photo cover of what, what we expected to be in the movies, uh, the, uh, you know, the recent sequels as such. Another one here is uh, it's a cover. It's uh, Hyporion, one of my favorite characters that was revitalized in the 2000s by J. Marco Szyzynski, uh, writer of Rising Stars. Um, and he revitalized Thor, you know, and he revitalized Spider-Man. It was on its way out. Um, but then he left that because JQ, Joe Q uh, trashed his, um, his um, iconic One More Day story. So this is Hyporion. It's part of the Squadron Supreme characters. Um, now, when I got into it, the Supreme Power was the series that uh, JMS took over to revitalize the 1980s. Uh, just these kind of knockoff, but made, Marvel was able to make their own one. I can't remember who wrote it. Uh, I have the graphic novel, and I think I have the single issue somewhere as well. Uh, and also one of the other characters of that. Now, these are part of the uh, Series 1 classic um, 
action figure character. So this is Warrior Woman. So Warrior Woman is basically um, a Wonder Woman knockoff as such, um, a goddess as such. So talking about Wonder Woman, um, I just bought this poster yesterday of this beautiful Gal, uh, Gal Gadot, uh, Wonder Woman, the first movie, um, you know, amazing photo poster, just brilliant. Now, as we know, this week, um, the other day, DC decided to do a, uh, give someone a, you know, <laughs> a variant cover which looked like trash I, uh, off of Wonder Woman to promote the Wonder Woman 1984 movie. My comment on that was like a 10 year old could do a better job, sadly. Uh, and um, and you got an adult to do it. Rather, just get, why don't you just pay a pro to do it? I mean, look at this. This cover is way better. <laughs> it's an action, uh, um, you know, action figure cover is way better. Even the photo cover, right? Like they should have just used the photo cover of Wonder Woman. Of the first movie to do it, or even of the, um, you know, of the, um, of the new movie to do it, because that would have been cool as well. So the other one I bought, all right, is this Nick Fury, beautiful cover, action. I love these action covers. I like the Lego covers, and I like the Chibi style covers because they're like really cool. So this Nick Fury, um, of course, of the movies, Avengers movies, brilliant. Another awesome cover, right? And now we've got Star Lord. Peter Quail cover, another beautiful cover. I don't know when these came out, but um, you know I'm buying back issues because what else are you gonna do? The new ones are trash. So you know, another one. Um, and talking about revitalizing by J. J. Michael Straczynski, this is um, Doctor Strange. Now he did a revi um, revamp of Doctor Strange as well as a mini series. It was six issues. I think I have that somewhere as well because I love J. Michael Straczynski's writing. He's really good at character building. He used to work on Murder She Wrote, uh, and he also he had his own TV series. I can't remember. I think it was Jeremiah was the name of it. Brilliant, brilliant story, sci-fi series, really worth watching. Another one here uh, is this one here uh, of Wolverine. One of my favorite characters, uh, I still love him. I just don't read the comics because they have just trashed Wolverine. This is what happens when you get people in who don't know comics or don't know how to write about the character that they're writing about and just ruin it by coming on board and you know, basically trashing the whole iconic uh, beauty, beauty of the character, the story, the background, who he is and what he's about, right? So this is uh, this is X Men. I love this cover. It reminds me of the 1980s, or uh, 1990s, I should say, of the late 1980s when I used to get, when I first got into X Men. X Men was the first thing that I really got into as um, you know when I was able to buy my own comics. I guess uh, Valiant was some of the things I used to um, do uh, buy because they were available at um, up in Kaikoi back in the 80s, mid 80s, late 80s when I got into comics as a purchaser. But like X-Men, Mutants, uh, uh, never really got into um, New Avengers or anything like that, but I really like the whole idea of mutants and the concept. So this is a variant cover of, of um, Batman number 52. Don't care much about the writer, but this is a beautiful, beautiful uh, cover. I don't um, like when when I like um, the thing about variant covers. I don't like lots of words on them. I like to just know what it's called, what issues for, and then just show me the picture, the beauty, because I'm about all about the art, right? Okay. So the last one is the Fearless Defenders number one variant. As I can see, most of them are mine are number one. This is a beautiful, beautiful. Um, let me see. This is a cover by. Uh, I know this guy, Young, Young. It's a Young cover. I, I love Young covers. He's, you know, I, I collect some Young covers just for the, you know, comics just for the covers. I think this is, you know, it's just, it's just so cute, right? Um, it's just amazing. Um, and I like cutesy things. I think it's it's just, you know, I think in a way it's just keeps me young. I don't know, weird. But uh, I think I just love the artwork. Um, it's, it's, you know, if you were at, um, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that I, uh, I've started coloring in the um, Plunge Comics, uh, pl sorry, Plunge Convention uh, coloring comp 
for Incredigirl that we put out. I, I designed it, uh, it took me about a day or two, uh, just did it as an outlines, uh, inked outlines, and then uh, I gave it to the kids. Um, for Hannah, one of our team members, to because she just looks after the children there, under 13s to just do the coloring. And they did their own versions uh, of the coloring in. And uh, there was three prizes, and I don't know who won. Hannah's all in charge of that. So I just stay, keep my hands off, and she decides who wins and who doesn't. And we just give the prizes out. And the good thing about that is the prizes for, I think, for that as well as for the cosplay came from Frank Ray uh, Youth Space uh, from Ryan Donaldson there, the manager there. I um, I just want to give a shout out to the community work that our um, that's community social work that's happening in our communities for the youth. Uh, and I think uh, there's some amazing uh, work done on the ground, right? Not just talking about it, not just fluffing opinions about it, but actual work done. I used to be a social worker myself in the sense of volunteer, uh, not tagged as a social worker, but you know, looking after kids and stuff as part of organizations. Uh, both adults, uh, you know, uh, going back 20 years, so it's Gen X, uh, now they're about 40 year olds like me or 30 year olds. Uh, but, you know, uh, and then also they were like looking after things under 13 year olds, uh, 12 and under as well. So I, you know, it's just when you're working with kids like that, you feel a bit more um, youthful. You learn to be youthful and how you deal with that age group. And, uh, and uh, you know, you have a passion for, for what they're about and what their interests are, what they're into and stuff. Now, that aside, I mentioned comics. I just want to, oh, one more, one more, one more. Um, this is a... Um, I'm lucky to get two copies of this because then I can give this to my sister, uh, sister's kids who are into this. So this is a uh, free comic book day um, release of Stranger Things. I have my, um, my sister's kids are right into Stranger Things and uh, you know, they just love the whole idea of it. I think they enjoy the storyline. And I, you know, the reason I think personally, and most people understand this, why, this age group, Gen Z, loves Stranger Things. The reason they love Stranger Things is because it reminds them what their parents actually enjoyed growing up. Sure, we had problems, we had issues, we were, we were the latchkey kids. So we were the kids with a key around a, on a string, you know, uh, to our homes. And we go. When our parents would go to work, and we'd spend all weekends, all afternoons, running around in, in the community, just hanging out and being kids, building huts, uh, sword fighting with sticks, uh, building bow and arrows, building um, shelters out of uh, twigs and whatever we could find, timber and stuff, and ru running around on our beyond maxes. And this is the love that the the people who wrote and uh, produced. Stranger Things understand that the 80s was like that. Okay, we had all the horrible things that happened in the 80s as well. But like every generation, right? But Stranger Things picks up on the joy of being children, of being in that age group, of being young youth, uh, young younger adults, you know, um, around the 13, 14, 15 year old age, uh, just being able to just enjoy being around with your friends, running around, now there isn't so much of that because of the way society's become um, and how we've become very um, um, inward and not so uh, social, despite social media and all that. We, it's actually take social media has actually taken us away from the personal uh, touch, uh, the personal um, community of actual people hanging out and you know run, you know just being friendly towards each other, learning off each other, uh, learning to um, relate to each other outside of school, outside of, um, you know, organizations and just being out and about and just being able to just enjoy each other's companies and being kids. Uh, this is one, one of the things I really do not like about social media. It takes people away from being, uh, having actual, um, deep relationships in the sense that you actually know about a person, what they're about, what their interests are, what they enjoy, and so on. And I think having this show on on, TV, on Netflix, right, 
And this is why Netflix, it kills on Netflix, why it, it does so well on Netflix every time, why people, kids just binge it, and adults binge it as well. So, you know, you can sit down with your kids and watch it. It's a very, very personal uh, look and uh, at what the 80s was like growing up. And it's very true to form. Um, sure, it's around fantasy and um, and sci-fi and all that setting, but the whole thing, it's like a Goonies. My my whole my whole take on it, a personal opinion, is it's, a, it's the Goonies of um, this generation, all right? You got kids hanging out and just going on an adventure. And this is what it's about. It's about adventure. And that's why the show does so well. Uh, one of the comics that I picked up, um, and this is all thanks to um, Mark One Comics um, down in Hamilton, right? So this is... Uh, now, if I remember right, I'm not sure what the story is about, but I picked it up because, um, you know, I asked because it's a free comic book day, thanks. There's Batman Tales Once Upon a Time. Uh, I think it's for a, a younger adults. It's a graphic novel. Uh, I'm not so sure. I like Justin Ewan. Ewan Justin Newen's a great artist. Uh, all right. So he's, you know, he's got this really very childlike style in this one. Uh, you know, like coloring style. And I think there's a cool, there's a place for that and it's just enjoyment. Uh, also, on the back of this, you have uh, this this um, Batman Overdrive. So it's a, it's a dual side thing, right? I don't care so much for this story from what I, you know, from what I hear. It's a terrible, terrible story, but, you know, great art. And the art from that, is, of course, is by Marcella de Sharia. And, uh, you know, it's just great art, All right? It's for young adults, I guess. It's for more, more, more aimed at children. But I don't like the way they went with that. I think it's just, <sighs> there's two words I hate in society right now, especially social media, and it's inclusive, VD, and, I, and diversity. And that's my take on it. It's like an overused, um, pointless, uh, diversive um, use of those terms. Okay, so those are the comics. Right. While I'm staying on the comics, now from independent comics, like this is from one for me, right? Uh, I finally got around after <laughs> over a decade. I think it's been 13 years. I finally got around to get um, my comics finished and published. I started this at the start of last year. Uh, six issues of um, The Circle. It's a mature readers comic, right? Uh, it's a film. Uh, it's a. It's like a film, film noir style black and white uh, comic based off a film I wrote, uh, a feature length film, which is like an hour and a half. I think it was an hour and fifteen to twenty five minutes long. Uh, original music and everything. Uh, and uh, I had so much fun doing it. I set out like when I, when we went to make when I went to film school. The only reason I decided to go to this film school uh, was that I mean to that dude in Chicago was that. Of course, there was zero freeze, but I didn't even really care about that. I was looking for to get into film. Uh, back This was back in 2002, 2003, and I wanted to get into making movies. This was my passion after six odd years of almost doing uh, stage productions and uh, plays, writing my own and doing feature length, uh, I think almost hour long uh, stage productions and acting and producing them, designing the costumes, designing the sets and so on. And then having so many, so much support in doing that, and that, and that, that I really, um, you know, I, I really uh, put down to the support I had from the uh, from the church I was involved in at the time. That was Christian Union Church. This is way back in two thousand and then uh, ninety six to two thousand, I think it was, and then two thousand two to two thousand. I think it was mid two thousand one to mid two thousand two where I worked for the Salvation Army here in Whangarei. And I continued with learning how to edit movies, how to edit shorts, and so on, and just carried on with that. So I started this after, I'm like working on this after um, film school. I had to work shift work, which meant I was working from like Tuesday to Saturday. So I had Sunday, Monday off, and I'd be at home by myself uh, while my, um, my wife at that time was doing five day Monday to Friday. So I was at home just and I wanted to figure out how to do comics. And I was because I'd been into comics for so many decades at that time. And, um, you know, a decade and a half, I guess at the time I was only about 27 or something like that. So 
yeah, maybe about 15 odd years I was into comics hard out and buying and spending thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of dollars into it. So I was kind of interested in um, turning, you know, because I wasn't, a, I'm not a great artist and, um, you know, uh, when it comes to actual comic book art and stuff. So the circle became my little, um, I did a couple of shorts, right, from taking photos and trying to do that. And we're going to put the, the torn, I think, was my first attempt at it. Uh, didn't complete it, but um, it was based on a short film that we, I did at film school down in the cable. So the circle is basically about four guys. Uh, and and I've mentioned the circle before, but it's just, just a revamp, right? So it's about basically a crime noir, six issue limited series about friendship, deception, blackmail, and revenge. Four friends, one game, murder, right? Um, and so, like I said, it's based off the film that I wrote and produced and directed and so on and um, had some of my amazing classmates act in it and also people who went to who were in the who were there at the time uh and also people who were actually tutors um darren ludlow who's i think is a co-mayor or something of Invercargill right now i haven't checked up on recently uh he's uh, he was he acted in it as a police officer so you know we had some uh, we had a drama uh, student who acted acted in as a, as a police officer we had another student who was an indian who actually wasn't at that school but was actually i think in dunedin or christchurch studying but i had met him and i said hey i'd like you to be in the film and so there and we had another student who was a act, first year actor who actually had never really done anything like this was able to get in there and my um my assistant director was amazing, a producer. She just got all these people together and we did this over two weeks, school holidays. Okay, so it's, like I said, it's, uh, you know, it's it's a black and white uh, using, uh, I think I, I think I used a publisher at the start and I went on to finish it with um, Wacom and with Clip, Clip Stereo Paint. So the reason, like I said, I mentioned it, I've just, 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 just last week, finished the sixth issue. So it's a 13 year project um, that I, uh, yeah, that I finally completed, excuse me. You know, and it's also possibly because of uh, investment that I made in Rising Sun Comics about, you know, I think about 10 odd years ago, seven odd years ago. Uh, and this is, this is the thing about like, um, believing in other people's work believing and most of all believing in yourself is that and then investing in that is that later on you know you get to complete stuff um you get to see the fruit of your labors if you stick with it and like i said this is part of our plunge studios thing right uh this was the first one um i love the story uh i re revamped the story i um i revised the story so we work as a better as a comic book uh um, the other thing is a lot of times that people, when they write about certain issues, they like to put a trigger warning on them. I don't think that's a good thing because, uh, and I take that from REM, um, the, the band REM, uh, who talked about Nirvana and Kurt Cobain about how Cobain said, if you don't like gays, don't come to my show. And REM's, um, lead singer said, listen, Kurt, that's not the way to do things. Just don't do that. Don't stop people from coming to see you if they love your music. So that's why when it comes to like um, trigger warnings, I don't go for that. So for, you know, so when I, when I rev um, revise the story, I, um, I, you know, I decide there's no reason to warn somebody because it's a mature reader straight away. Tell them people, this is, if you're a mature person, you know, if you, if you think of yourself as an adult, you know, go read the book. It's, you know, try it out. Um, and if you don't like it, don't read it, right? Pass it on to somebody else. But I think putting warnings on lay, uh, on things is good if it's for that age group. And I believe in it sincerely as a writer, as an artist. I don't think that everything's for everybody. I don't think that uh, everybody should be able to be, have access to everybody, everything. I, um, I believe in rating systems. I believe that what's for adults should be for adults. What's for children should be for children. And that's why in New Zealand, I, um, I love our classification board to to an extent. Uh, sometimes they go overboard. I reached out to them last yesterday, actually, after hearing about the Australian, you know, after a week of you know going on a, hearing about the Aussie manga ban. And uh, because I'm a huge fan of anime, I've watched hundreds of uh, episodes of anime. Uh, of, um, I love manga, uh, and I'm a great supporter of that art form. Uh, and um, 
you know, that's why we actually in Plunge, I included the anime um, part of it because I believe, I believe that it's it's just an amazing, uh, amazing art form and why not? It's part of the whole illustration uh, art and comics and cartoons and strips, right? So, um, so I'm just excited that I finally got to finish the number six issue. So the whole series is now finished. It's off my shoulder. I was dragging my heels, um, you know, trying to get this thing done. Uh, sometimes when you're in the middle of it, you go, oh, man, there's so, so much better stuff out there. Why are you trying to do something? And it's like, well, I'm here now. I got to complete it. And then when I got to fifth issue, I was like, oh, I got to finish a sixth issue. So it took me ages to finish a sixth issue. So here we are a year and a half later, and it's all completed. Rising Sun Comics is going to do a, um, a print run of it soon. But I think on... Uh, on drive through comics and Amazon, you can get it through Kindle. I think it's called uh, the Circle Revised. I, it'll be in the mature section. And I and I like I said, I always think that you know they should like if not sure if you can read it, but there's a mature uh, mature readers thing right there. Uh, hey, thanks, man. Thanks, uh, Ronald uh, Forrest. Cheers for that. Um, yeah, it's it feels really good to have my first series completed. It's like it's really it's, it's it's like trial and error because you're trying to, like when I first put it out, they had like a hundred thousand downloads and those were like really bad, um, like the editing and stuff like was all over the place, but it had over a hundred thousand downloads of the series and, and it was trashy. Like, believe me, it was really trashy. The, uh, um, the webs, um, the, um, the PDF copies I put up way back in 2010, they were really trashy. And so I, having this chance to actually, revise it, rewrite it, add more art to it, fix up some of the art, fix up the speech bubbles, put it in the right places. Because when I when I went from publisher to Wacom, um, uh, Clips of Your Paint, which used to be uh, Manga Studio, it messed up all my, um, all my uh, text and stuff. And it's uh, just, you know, um, I just didn't want to touch it again for so many years. And then last, um, I think it was, end of to the, uh, mid or late 2018 when Rising Sun Comics reached out. They said, hey, we'd like to really put this out again as a print thing. And I said, okay, okay, but I'm really not sure. I'm not really enjoying this story. Now that I've completed it, I really enjoy the story. Having to rewrite it the way um, as a comic book, excuse me, and uh, and fix up all the problems I had with it um, from joining to different software, uh, mix, uh, moving to different software and back again. Uh, being able to fix it has just given me a great joy. Um, it's still, you know, it's been a year and a half of a hard slogger in the middle of everything that we've been doing. Like we had, uh, we did two plunges, <laughs> right? Two plunge conventions. Uh, we set up the company. Uh, we um, set up the studio. We set up, um, uh, what else did we set up? We set up the magazine. We, you know, finished the magazine. Then realized that we had to fix it, so they get it printed locally that rather than send it overseas. Had to redo it to a mature readers thing rather than an adult thing on the cover. Uh, and then, you know, I'm waiting. You know, that's the next project after this. Um, but in the middle of that, also, okay, we had the we had the pandemic, um, and we had to wait that. Then doing the streaming, and then really working to make sure that we do a good put um, put on a good show with the uh, with the conventions and um, we have a great team we have a great team of about five key key members and key people uh five or six five i think six uh one signing you know. um and you know we've got a great magazine coming out soon um once i finish that we'll have a we'll have a printed one to show that this is what it looks like. This is what, it, you know, this is how, how it all works. You know, just like, you know, just like being able to hold this thing up and go, this is what it looks like. This is how it works. You get a physical copy. Right. Um, so it, it feels good to have something like that done. And I think um, the struggle now for young people is like, they want to get to the end, like to number six before number one's done. And they think that, you know that it's uh, that we'll, we'll get the big dollars without working to learn the job first at the lower level. I remember I used to talking about that. I used to get six dollars twenty five an hour when I first started working at the age of sixteen, seventeen. Uh, when I finished work, I was up to about maybe fifteen dollars an hour, 
or something, or maybe twelve dollars an hour. Something like I don't know, can't remember. It's been it's been a decade since I've been able to physically do a nine to five job due to my health. But so yeah, so um, it just feels good to get that done. And thanks, Ronald. Um, you know, um, it just feels to um, get that out get that out there. All right, like I said, um, you know, Stranger Things is probably the best show on TV for everyone, right? Just like, um, you know, um, Game of Thrones used to be the best thing for mature watchers and viewers until the eighth season. I didn't even bother watching the eighth season. Even I, at the end of season seven, I think it was, I was like, I'm done with the show. Uh, and that was it. Okay, moving along for this finale. I mean, I've talked for about half an hour about comics. And like I said, I, you know, I've been a huge comic fan, but I don't, I don't enjoy what's happened with Marvel Comics and DC Comics. It's just they just trash their own character, and even trashing uh, Wonder Woman, the biggest female icon of ever. It was one of the greatest female iconic. Yes, I am opening it. I haven't opened it yet. Let's get rid of cellophane. The big, you know. When you ruin, when you let someone do a trashy uh, cover of this person for a comic book, right? And go, this is a very cover. When I can hold up these amazing something like this, right? Artwork. Hold up something like that, right? And hold up. Uh, and like I said, I buy, I buy very comics, uh, covers only. I don't buy comics for the stories anymore. You know, when you have something like that, amazing comics covers done by professionals, and then you let somebody else just come in there and do like a a stick figure with, I mean, you know, just trashy thing, and then you got this amazing, you know, time and effort goes into doing cover. Um, so here, yeah, let's do this. This is the Monopoly 80 Years of Marvel, um, and I think that basically ends my whole. Um, love for the actual comics of marvel uh sure i'll buy the covers bearing covers because of covers i love them because that's got nothing to do with the story um but um you know my joy of reading comics has just gone out the door and i mean mainstream comics um and stuff okay so the first thing you see is this right and um a little how to uh instruction right what it's going to look like before you open it up and stuff what i like about this is the packaging i think that uh it's not the usual rectangular shape uh, i love um and i want to get the deadpool one next I, I i just it's there's something about um enjoying comics for what they are what the characters are and that's what i loved about wolverine until now right until now, I don't like Wolverine anymore. I love the character. I like the art. I like that. I do not like Wolverine um, any anymore in the stories. Right? Um, some of my friends have said, "Oh, it's, it's okay." Uh, I'll think one of my friends says, "It's it's because sorry." I said after um, after the whole uh, the most recent. Uh, this is getting uh, not doing what I want. I don't want to damage it. Okay, so these are the community chest type. I'm using a scissors because I don't want to ruin my beautiful um, set. All right, come on, baby. There we go, got it. All right, so let's open up. All right, so you get this little, the great things about this is, and is that you got these little covers right of the classic um and i guess you're supposed to fold them up i'm sure you're not supposed to like cut them up right so this is the this is the mortgages so this is the the homes right so i get the houses or the properties i should say these are the properties cards isn't it like check it out man like i actually i think i actually have this comic um, old man Logan somewhere. Uh, um, you got the runaways, right? And then you got some of the newer ones. Oh no, this is actually the older one. Sorry, this is when you know Miss Marvel, the actual proper 
way back when Miss Marvel, right? Um, then you've got the new Thor, female Thor. Uh, you've got the Guardians of the Galaxy. And then you got the, and I think, yep, you got the original Guardians of the Galaxy and what they used to look like. Ooh, let me just see that. If I can get that right, sorry. Nope, right away. Uh, Groot, all right? Tell us to astonish Groot. And of course, this is in the 90s, 1990s, 1991. I think this is when they put out the second um, series of X Men comics. And I collected them. You know, I had like thousands of dollars, thousands and thousands of thousands of dollars of comics that went up in a fire. And most of them were X Men and uh, mutants and all that. So uh, this is the giant size X Men cover then you got the spider-man cover i think this is the todd mcfarlane one if i remember right this is the beautiful todd mcfarlane cover if i remember right i might be wrong all right and then you have the secret wars i think i might have this comic as well and this is the first appearance of uh of spider-man all right and then you got the first appearance of uh um thor and then you got hulk Whoops. And then you've got Captain America for the Avengers when the return of Captain America lives again. As you, of course, you've seen the uh, Avengers series uh, and the whole MCU phase one. I, I uh, whatever phase the original, I've, I've, I'm, I'm done with MCU now. Um, like the last, uh, last series that was there, is, that's all done for me. So this is the Silver Surfer. I had, a, when I used to live in Auckland, uh, way back in the late 80s and up to 93, I think it was, in, like, yeah, up to 93, from 87 to 80, no, yeah, about five years I lived in Auckland, 87 to 93, I think it was, or 82, uh, 88, sorry. Uh, so you got the Fantastic Four, and I had, the reason I mentioned that is because I had a f flatmate in a block of flats, uh, a guy downstairs who was, used to be a, uh, used to be a BMXer and he had a really cool BMX bike and one day there was a comic book lying on the floor and I was like on the ground on the grass uh and I picked it up and took it home upstairs and then he came and knocked on my door said hey look dude uh I think you got my comic I said I might have because I just found one comic on the ground there because oh it's mine I said wait you read comics as well like, yeah I said oh come in come in come in and this is what fandom's about, right? Check this out. This is how fandoms work. And this is what people don't understand why fandom is so good. If a person's about passionate about something, they'll share that passion with other people. So what happened with me was I went, hey, come up, come up, come up, come look at me, man. Come come and check out my comics. Right? I've got a boxes of comics here. I go every every payday, every Friday, I go into town. Every Friday, I go to Mike One Comics. Uh, into and this is like back in, like I said, in the 80s, right, and early 90s. And I buy my comics, I spend 70 dollars, 50 to 70 dollars every week out of my income of 170, right? I think about 190 or something like that. After I paid my rent, which was just about 80 dollars, so I only had 100 dollars left. So all I had was some money for beer and alcohol, right? And the rest went on music and comics. So about Maybe 50% of my income went on my love for comics and music, right? Uh, so this is, and so I got to share with him my love. And of course, you know, he was a Silver Silver fan. He wasn't into Daredevil. Or, I mean, sorry, into Mutants or anything like that. And I was a huge X-Men fan, as I mentioned. So here's the next one. This is um, Daredevil. And, right. Um, and then you got the Marvel Knights, and this is Black Widow. And here's the thing: I really love the whole Black Widow. Oops, it's better the other way. I right. I really love the Black Widow character. I I love the idea of someone having no power. As much as I love superheroes and stuff, I love the idea of somebody who trains their body, who trains and trains and trains to be able to compete with the best of the best, with those that have power, those who are like the you know, epitome of heroes. And yet there's someone here who's got no power at all. And that's what I like about Punisher, as you can see, right? 
excuse me. And that's what I love about Black Widow. And I was, you know, they should have, like, my belief is they should have put a Black Widow movie out about five years ago, right? When everybody was into it, into the character, into what she was about. And just, she just, you know, it's like she was, her and Hawkeye, same thing, no powers, same thing, training themselves to be, to compete with the heroes, right? To compete with the villains, super villains, and yet having no power themselves. Those two characters should have had a standalone movie five years ago. And that would have just blown up. And I would have watched that, right? And been, you know, hard out up there promoting it. And, and, and I think the idea that uh, comic fans don't like female characters is bollocks, right? It's, you know, it's bull, oh, it's BS. Uh, I mean, I have so, I'm surrounded by, you know, female characters. My favorite female character used to be Storm, watching, uh, you know, uh, reading Marvel comics and stuff. I love Storm. And I, and I thought she was just amazing. Her, her character arc, her whole being a, uh, a homeless urchin in Africa and being able to transition to America to be part of the X-Men, to be a leader, right? To be a leader. And, um, and that just, that's why I don't like the comics nowadays. I, they don't know how to write characters that they own, right? They get people who write journals, who write websites, articles to write comics that's not how you do it you get the pros who spend all their lives learning the art to do it right uh, the next one uh another fantastic four uh i i've seen this cover i'm not sure if i have this oh no this is the first the reason i've seen this cover this is number one all right this is the number one fantastic four uh all right so the next one is um the, here's the thing, right? most of the um, MCU characters are, uh, are a version of the DCU characters, all right? Uh, Punisher is one, Deadpool is one, um, right? But they've also been able to, just like I do with my own characters, make it their own. And Submariner, right? King of Atlantis, all right? Same thing. Here you go. Aquaman, a version of Aquaman. Great character, right? Um, this one here is Marvel Comics. Can't remember uh, what this one's all about. I don't even remember seeing this sometimes. Uh, this, I think this might have been there just like their promotional type thing. Uh, okay, so this is a new version of... Um, for a while, I liked this this version in the, um, of Captain Marvel. I think it's the first 24 issues. But then they just got boring and boring and boring, and then her character became a villain. Right? So they didn't know what to do with her, just so she, they turned her into a communist villain dictator. And that was part of the, I think it was part of the Civil War. This is an awesome, um, I think it's from the extremist. I oh, know this is the Invincible Iron Man. I have a friend. Uh, Sandman, who's just uh, loves Iron Man, he just collects Iron Man. But of course, as I mentioned, um, I have this comic. This is the P Punisher, uh, redone by, if I remember right, yep, Garth Ennis, and seemed like a Crusader on the art. But this series series of Punisher by Garth Ennis is the best in the world when it comes to writing. He's the greatest. Garth Ennis is the greatest writer when it comes to Punisher. He totally, totally gets the character. He just, he totally understands what the character's motivations are, what his whole um, whole mental, emotional working is. And he does so, you know, he, he does it. He's just brilliant at writing that character. And, uh, and he just gets the character. He just does it. Uh, even I sometimes don't get the character, but, uh, you know, if I was trying to write that. So for me, like if you you guys have heard um, um, with me talk about Red Dot, we're working the first issue of Red Dot as a one shot. Uh, and uh, as part of the Plunge universe of our character, you know, of our own universe of characters for Plunge Studios. And uh, Red Dot is our version of the vigilante who's a Kiwi 
And, uh, you know, um, let me just grab this um, to show you guys. Oops. This is one of the first uh, art that uh, my um, my friend and my artist and Plunge Studios um, head uh, director, art director uh, Shane Evans Simmons did uh, of um, Red Dot. So this is what Red Dot looks like. Uh, he do, he's done other versions. We've updated some of the, um, the looks of it. The mask is a bit different. Um, and if you were at Plunge, you would have seen uh, some of the you know, some of the pins that the library, shout out to the library from our library. I mean, great supporters of Plunge. And what we do here in Whangarei to promote um, art and literature and um, reading and, you know, just people just getting into comics and manga and just just a fandom, celebration of fandom. And the, um, and I was talking to Glenn yesterday, who's over at um, the library, just saying the, how much I support, I enjoy um, their support and how they've, you know, they're already, right at, when we finished this year, they were like, see you next year, right? That's what you want, that's what you want. Uh, to have people say, hey, we'll be back next year, you know, and it's just great to have them with us uh, as support. And it's just, I think having people that believe in what you do is very important. But not only that, it's a huge freaking responsibility to to um, to finish, right, to, to show up uh, despite how you feel. Uh, even on a day when you don't want to be there or something, not that I don't want to be the plant, but I'm just saying this is, you know, when it comes to doing things, you get worn out and stuff, and um, but you show up, all right? It doesn't matter, but you show up because you have people counting on you. And it's like my team, my team counts on me, and I count on my team. That's why we've really shortened our team because of, you know, knowing that we have such great people. Um, I think it's outside of our five, there's another five uh, who uh, who run their own thing, right? Uh, and we let them run their own thing because we believe in them, we trust them to be there and they show up and they support us. And um, it's good to have that. And because um, without support, everything falls over. And so, you know, even since last year, we changed to this year and then next year we changed to put anime in the tag uh, and um, byline for plunge. All right, um, I think I have this comic. As well, I have. I think I have the whole set. This is um, the. I think this is uh, like the Marvel Knights version of um, Black Panther. I actually have the first issue of appearance of Black Panther as well. Uh, and yeah, I was. I'm never. I'm not a big Black Panther fan. Uh, I think the whole idea of Wakanda is a joke uh, because um, because you have a very privileged technical um, tribe. Who keeps every other tribe away from their technology, from enjoying their riches, being able to be, be uplifted? Uh, and I think Wakanda is like a um, like a a dictatorship that keeps everybody at bay. And people don't understand it. I don't understand why people don't understand the, what Wakanda is. If you in the middle of a of a uh, a country are the most privileged and most um, advanced, and yet you can't share that privilege advancement with other tribe members, other tribes around you, right? Other societies around you, then yeah, it doesn't make sense to be, I'm Wakanda, it doesn't make sense. Because that doesn't that doesn't think I'm I have more sort of I sort of kind of more like kill killmonger, I think, at the end of the movie, because I was like, at least he's saying, why aren't you sharing what you have, right? And that's that's just my take on that. All right, so that's all the that's all the um, property cards, right? Okay, so let's go into the the catalog. I think it's the com uh, community chest thing. So let's try not to kill, um, destroy any of my cards. All right. Let's see what these ones are, because that that the property ones are really blew me away. I didn't expect that, because I mean I just like when I when I saved up for this. By the way, I, it took me about two months or so to save up to buy this, because I I um I don't 
outright by the, so, um, you know, because I like to, uh, it was on special and um, I had to, you know, I slowly put away a couple of bucks a week on it so I could get that. So, so the catalog um, cards, like the, if you pass, go collect 200. So this is a Punisher. If you pass, go collect 200. All right, which is really cool. So it's a cover on there. Uh, then you've got advanced to uh, Marvel property, right? So I, I, I would have liked them to have like uh, maybe just like with this one here, right? With this one here, how you got a half big photo and um, image in the thing one. That would have been cool if they had a whole, this half here would have been the whole image rather than this little tiny thing. A whole image on this side would have been really good. Um, okay, so that's you know, so that's your community chess um, cards, and you've got the little image on. Whoops, sorry for the light there. The little image in the middle. Like I said, I would have rather have seen them to do that. Um, the whole center. So, of course, then you got the money. Let's see what the money's all about on this. I want to get the, leave the icons to the last because they look really cool. I'm looking at them; they're really shiny. Uh, and then the board, of course. Now, we've had Monopoly in our homes for, for a long time, uh, for decades. It's one of the first games. I think, well, we've had many games, but like one of the first games is a family game that we used to play. And my little youngest brother, I have two brothers, um, two younger brothers, he used to always destroy us at it. And of course, <laughs> right, he's a guy that's, that's actually advanced in, uh, <laughs> when it comes to uh, companies and stuff, he's a very smart business person, and right. So this is how the what the money looks like. Uh, you got the um, icon uh, image of the eighty Marvel eighty years, um, and then you've basically got the prizes and stuff. So that's I would have liked, you know, like I said, I would have liked to see more images of the heroes rather than that. So there's a bit, bit of a letdown on that side. Um, and it's just, you know, it would have been cool to see, like, Captain America on one, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Fantastic, Black Widow on another. You know, like, hold on. This, this is what it would have worked. This is what would have really worked, right? So Because this is, this is the um, thing. So this is how it would have been the best, best thing about this thing, the best thing about the money. That you had Captain America on a, like on a twenty dollar, you had Black Widow on a fifty uh, or twenty, whatever. Uh, you had, had um, say like you had um, Thor on a hundred dollar note. You would have had uh, um, Vision. Uh, you would have had um, uh, who's the other character? Um, can't remember the female character. Uh, Wanda uh, Markinoff, of course. Um, Scarlet, if I remember Scarlet Witch, is brilliant. It's one of the most amazing characters, uh, right? So I would have went for the whole of, because this is right in the middle of the MCU, Avengers thing, right? I would have put Avengers characters on these notes. Each one would have had a different character of the um, of the Avengers. That would have been that. Of course, if they want to bring out an Avengers one, they could do that. But, oops, a bit of a twist there. But, um, but of course, this is, that's how I would market it because, uh, you know, I've done marketing and, you know, I do marketing for our company, um, you know, and so much in promoting and all that. But that's what I would have done. I would have said, put each of our main icons right now, the biggest things MCU right now is Avengers, each one on there, right? So, of course, you've got your dice. Um, now, okay. This is not letting. This is not making me happy at all. Right. So, what I would like these are tokens, right? So this is. I don't even know what these tokens. Oh, I see. I see. I get it. I really get it. Okay. I'm okay. I'm okay with this. Okay. At first, I wasn't going to be okay, but I'm okay with this. Graphic novels. The hardcover Marvel hardcover, without the uh, without the you know, a, um, what you want, cover, cover on it, right? So, sleeveless, 
right? So where are you, buddy? There we go. This is uh, Origins 2 Wolverine. So basically, it's representative of just being that, right? Of a hardcover. So it looks like a hardcover. Like I said, I used to buy Marvel Comics, but now I just buy it for the covers. I don't buy it to read anymore because the stories are trashy. So, and look at that. Isn't that awesome? All right. This is Origins 2. Look at that. That's inside of the actual actual sleeve of the hardcover. So they're really, like, a lot of times they don't do that. Uh, and I think that's a loss of uh, actual, you know, being, because here's the thing. When you're a fan and you don't really care much about the pricing of stuff, right? You, because you're a fan, it's what you enjoy. But you want to be able to get a good thing out of it. Uh, you, know, you want a value for money. You want a good design, and that is a good design on that, because it's not. Uh, it's not. Um, let me put out something else that has something like that. Oh, this is cool. This is this, and this other. This is value for money, right? This is um, this is uh, top ten by Martin by uh, Alan Moore and Gene Ha. Oh, you guys would know Gene Ha from. Um, Umbrella Academy, the artist on Umbrella Academy, right? So, yeah, Gene Hart, you know, get Gene Hart to um, do covers for everything, right? Because he's a great artist. Um, so, yeah, so that's, uh, yeah, another good hard cover. So I was trying to say, oh, that's my section of Alan Monster. Uh, another one, right? Another one, having a hard cover like that. Right, got to get back to the Marvel thing. Oh, oh, actually, maybe this might be might show you what I mean. Yeah. Right, so this is a DCU, um, the stories of Alan Moore. DCU Universe by Alan Moore, right? So this is what I mean by this whole um, hardcover series thing. So I think I'm happy with it. I think that's good. I wasn't ha happy when I first opened up, but I'm good at that now. So... You've got the hardcover um, graphic novel set up, and then I'm going to show you the next one, why I'm happy with it. Uh, for that. Like I said, I'm not happy with the money. I think the money is kind of like waste of design, uh, waste of uh, promotional. Um, you know, it's kind of one of those um, good good things you could do as, as part of a product you're trying to put out. Right. So, the, so now you've got the hardcover. I think the hotels, I forgot to mention that. Now you've got the, I think, the houses, which are single issue comic books. So you've got the Marvel, um, hopefully you guys can see that. No, you can't. Please. Yep. Oh, they almost had it. Nope. Uh, my nail's too big. Okay, it's white. It's not going to work. So, <laughs> but it's at the top, right at the top there, it says Marvel, just like with that, with the um, same one, the hotel says Marvel up there. So I'm, like I said, at first I wasn't, I was like, what is, you know, not my thing. And then I was like, very happy with that. Like I said, but not happy with that. That should have had the Avengers on each one. Of course, you've got your dice. You need that. Now, now. Take a moment. Now for the icons, All right? So each one of them has got to have the icons. Let me let me bring up the board. So you got your board, what that looks like. All right, off that one. Now I'm showing that for a reason. Um, before I pull out the board board, this is. This is a fold up square. Oh, I can just see it through the gap there. So you guys can see the whole thing. Can't go any further. Got the, got the shelves in the back of me. All right, so it folds up like that. And great board. Um, so let me have a back here. I only showed it to you guys, but I didn't see it myself. So, like I said, each one of the properties is the comics, right? Isn't it brilliant? I think this is. This is, um, apart from the money, this is a good, good, um, good product um, as for a fan. 
right, so let's start with um, now. It's a it's a feels like it's metal, might be pewter. But this is the black uh, black panther. If I'm you know I might be wrong. Okay. That's a black panther icon. Uh, then you've got uh, the Spider Man icon. All right, the masks. I'm okay with this. I would have actually loved to see the actual head, right? Like something like this. Uh, like an actual head of the character on the on the token whoops because at the end of the day you want to give your customer the best thing right okay this is okay but remember okay remember the original monopolies actually have a 3d figure and that's what i mean by actual giving them the head right giving them this sort of um three-dimensional thing because that sort of shows uh, and like i said your fan isn't worried so much about the money, but is is more concerned about getting the product that is, you know, is vital. So I would say, you know, if you put, you know, put it like a head like this on the little um, on a little stand, right? Because when you're, you know, when you're a fan, like I said, you can't. I can't reiterate. You're not too concerned about the cost of the thing. You'll buy it anyway because you're in love with it. And you love the product. But if you're a manufacturer, a company, you want to go to the fans and go, what, you know, what do you want? What, what, what could we do this? You know, and like I said, the original monopolies are three dimensional um, things like the shoe uh, and so on. And the dog is three dimensional, cute things, right? Okay, so you've got the, uh, the Spider-Man, you've got the Black uh, Panther. Now, I don't know who this is. This is kind of weird for me. I um, uh, I think this might help. No, you guys probably know more about this. Like I said, I'm a bit when it comes to memory. Um, because I've had about seven, eight head injuries, concussions. I um, forget. Uh, I think this could be Marvel, Captain Marvel, or something. I'm not sure. Right? I might be wrong in that. And there's another one here that I'm not sure about either. I'll have to look, read it up. Uh, maybe it's doesn't say there, right? So and doesn't say there. So I'm expected to know that. I might have to. No, there's nothing on the sides of the box to tell me who they are. There's nothing on the back of it to tell me who they are or what these are. You know. So there's this one here. Not sure who that is. Maybe it's Guardians of the Galaxy. Something to do with that. I'm not sure. All right, of course, I'm saving the best for last um, in a minute. So this is last, um, this is another one here. I have no idea who that is or what that who re that's represented by. Um, probably when we start playing the game sometime, you might tell us that. All right, so now we're coming up with the, the bigger ones. Shield, who doesn't recognize Shield, right? Um, I've seen about four seasons of Shield. I kind of lost my interest after the, um, I think, end of last year or something like that. I think when they went to, um, came back to Earth or something after being in space, whatever. All right, so I'm going to pull this out and hold it in my hand because these are the, the best three that I think they have out of all these that I can recognize. I mean, not recognize, but I think this is great. Oh, the other thing is, like, they should have made the base that's plastic metal as well. So here we go. This is Fantastic Four, the logo. All right. The, you know, iconic. And then you got the Avengers. All right. And my favorite, we're going just a bit over time, uh, X-Men. Right. My first kind of love for actual comics, comics. And I, like I said, I've read many different comics, uh, smaller companies and so on. But um, X-Men was my first love. And when, you know, a few years ago when they ruined the whole storyline and they went away from what was great about the X-Men, you know, it kind of put me off reading X-Men comics. But like, this is... This is basically a really good set, apart from 
the monies. The monies, which I reckon they should have put like each um, Avengers character on there or each team leader, like maybe Reed, Reed Richards, uh, maybe, um, you know, um, anyway, main main team leaders for each character, like Storm from the X-Men would have been great. Um, so on, um, you know, Captain America and so on. All right, so that, my dear friends, thank you for joining me, is the unboxing of, of Marvel uh, Monopoly's 80-year um, Marvel comics, uh, comics, 80 years of Marvel comics Monopoly set. Uh, so I'm really, uh, I think, apart from what I noted, uh, I'm quite pleased with the set. Like I said, it took me a while to get it. It's been, I think I started um, putting money down for it for the start of the year or something. Um, but yeah, so thank you for watching. Um, hopefully you enjoyed that. I haven't done, like I said, I haven't done an unboxing for ages. And I actually got asked on YouTube to do unboxings. So again, this is one of them. Uh, I have a, I have quite a few things to unbox. It's just that I haven't got around to it. So we'll do another unboxing maybe next Tuesday, Monday. Uh, like I said earlier on, I reached out to the classifications board of New Zealand. I sent them an email, actually rang them up and then got told to um, send them an email about what I want to do, try to get them on here and talk about uh, censorship and classification of manga and anime and comic books and cartoons and stuff and film. And how in New Zealand, how we have an actual board who's part of the government uh, and they work, uh, I think I think they uh, work on their own to watch all the stuff that comes into the country and decide what gets labeled what the rating. And I'm happy with that, uh, but sometimes they they molly coddle adults and uh and i know there's maturity levels with adults as there are maturity level with kids i've seen kids who are maybe around 13 14 who are really into deadpool and and i go uh uh it's a bit mm, it's a bit mature but then the parent goes you know my child is mature he understands everything he's not some you know some immature child he's actually quite intelligent person who understands about these things and they're okay and i said thank you for explaining that now i'm happy with selling you the comic book and then you and then it'll be just parents it the same like children did you we go sorry kid can't do that until your parents come in right i need to know who who my customer base is because i don't want to get done by the classifications board or you know legal system because i'm selling something that's under uh, not age appropriate for that child or that kid or whatever. The same thing with adults. You know, um, I think um, the idea is that stop trying to mollycoddle adults and um, and I think um, allow us to be able to judge for ourselves what's right and what's wrong because after all, if you live for a few decades, you should know what's right and wrong, right? Okay, that's me. Thank you for joining us. I just want to um, like, show you my, you know, actually let me, um, out of all the set of 10 comic books I bought this um, um, this past week for the covers only, like I, I did that at the start. So you can watch, if you've just joined me, you can do that at the start. My favorite, uh, favorite covers, I mean, they're all my favorite covers, but don't, because I, I bought them because, um, I, I just love the covers. Uh, this is this one here, right? Despite the fact that I don't like the, the last three um, movies they put out, the originals, um, three are, you know, amazing. This is a photo cover, and I think this is number one. Uh, overpriced, as always, right? Overpriced for what it is, but the, because it's a variant cover, that's awesome. And, and in the end, it's a very cheap way to put a variant cover, right? You don't even have to pay the artist, right? Because nobody's done the artwork on it. If you just grab a photo, right? Disney owns all this stuff. They've paid $4 billion for it, right? So they can just use whatever is available there and just slob it on. But uh, here's here's a really cool cover um, for X-Men number one. Uh, this is, uh, who's the cover by? Please tell me who the cover is by. Cover artist. Lionel, Lionel Francis Yu and Edgar Delgado. Awesome cover. Like I said, I don't buy comics book, reading comics anymore. I buy it for the covers. And I 
every now and then. Uh, so the other one, one of my other favorite artists, and I think um, is um, Young, Scotty Young. He just does some great work. Uh, he just, you know, I love the whole cartoon versions of characters, uh, but I also understand that there's a rule 24 or 32 or something weird like that, where there's actually uh, anything that's out there is a, has got a porn version of it. And uh, and it's just, it's just as distasteful as it is, I still think it's just cool to have some really, you know, real childish looking things around because this is so fun. And, you know, you can see is that Thor on the corner there. I don't even know who they are. <laughs> It's like it just looks weird, but uh, you know it's for, it's a it's the new defenders or the fearless defenders. Yeah, so those ones are top three. So, uh, but I do I do I do I do I do like these ones. Like I do like the action figure ones. They're just great. I um um okay. Last one. This this is cool. It's Patch way back in without the Patch way back in uh, Metropole. In the old days, it's like it reminds me of when he was sort of like just living in Japan uh, in that area. I think Metropole is like um, oh, I can't remember the name of that place now. Um, it's where they have all these um, casinos and stuff. Anyway, it's all, it's always like in James Bond movies where they go to casino, um, maybe Casino Royal. I don't know. But that's me for tonight, guys. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, I appreciate you for hanging out. Um, I think it's a bit long. I try to keep it under an hour for my ones, but longer for one, I guess. But lots of things covered. Um, as I mentioned, the uh, comics I bought this past week because I hadn't bought comics for ages, and then also completing my own comic, The Circle, uh, six issues all done. And thanks for Ronald for, um, for the comment there, man. So, yeah, all six issues out, and uh, hopefully they'll be available uh all six will be available as available on dig digital through drive through comics under um the circle revised uh i don't know if the number six is out yet um digitally but of course all of them will be in print and hopefully will be at next uh plans will have them uh, uh just in finishing um the french festival is coming up here in Fungare, uh local guys um, um check out the Fungare french on instagram um and see what they're doing. And I'm looking forward to it because we got invited to be part of it. Uh, so we'll have a, uh, a gazebo type tent thing there. Uh, we're trying to work out, uh, maybe do a class on comic books over the two days, just a one page um, comic. Um, you know, just just a single page comic along with uh, with our amazing artist, um, Seven, local, local comic hero of mine uh, to work on and of course, one of my best friends and also uh, partners in crime for producing comics here with Plunge. Um, yeah. So if you, yeah, check out the French festival on Instagram and check out what they're doing. I think, I'm not sure if they've got one on Facebook here, but Fungo French. Uh, I've got a friend who's part of that. And uh, I think um, being part of what's happening in the community is a way to be, um, to get off social media as much as I'm on social media, but also to um, hang out with people in real life. It's very, very important to socialize in real life with people because you, um, otherwise you get isolated and uh, and we've already had that with COVID. We don't want to feel like that of being isolated from people. And of course, you know what it feels like to be isolated from people uh, and you get into your own little bubbles and it's not good to be in your own little bubbles. Uh, be part of the community, be part of what's happening, be part of your fandom, uh, hang out and, you know, enjoy what everybody's doing and share what you love, which is what what comic books used to be about and uh, fandom used to be about, is to be able to share and talk about the characters you love, characters you don't like and why you don't like it and why you like it. It's all, you know, dress up as your, you know, your cosplay and enjoy it. I love seeing cosplay. Um, I wish I could do more cosplay, but walking around with a stick makes it kind of hard trying to cosplay. But um, but not only that, but when you're part of running something, you don't get a chance. And then also, for all, you know, it takes a bit of time to create cosplay. And I appreciate everybody who does cosplay. I think it's a great thing. I follow a lot of people on Instagram who do cosplay. Uh, and I love people who make their own 
as much as those ones that are bought look great, making your own cosplay is, um, it's like making a comic book. The thrill of finishing something and being able to show it off is just, uh, just amazing. So I'm going to leave that with that there. Kakite Ano, thank you for joining me tonight. And uh, wherever you are, keep well and um, all the best, you know, um, and be happy, be kind to each other and, you know, enjoy what you enjoy and just keep doing what you're doing. Be happy. <laughs>